here's Ed Bernstein. Well, today I have uh, two of Las Vegas's treasures. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, I really, you're laughing. I am. Yeah, Kim yeah, and Dana Wagner. No, no, no. You're too kind. No, I mean, I mean, you, you two are are, are so um, emblematic. Is that, is that the right word? Yeah. Uh, of of the community. Uh, I mean, just intelligent and, and attractive, and um, and just, I mean, you've become almost like the face of Las Vegas. Oh my goodness! That is you, so you really nice have. Of you to I'll give you half an hour to stop. It. I know. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, you humble and, us. And it's a yes. pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks um, for, thanks having, for us. having us. It's our pleasure to be here. Can you with believe you. it was ten years ago we first sat down and did this? I, I, it's boy, it, it, I mean, it, it's, flown it, it's, by. it's unbelievable how yeah. how time flies. But you know, the two of you look exactly the same as you did you then. Too. I know you were looking at some old photos, yeah. that you're not, <laughs> but you but you really do. And Thank I re you. I remember when you first came to town, right. and um, we had a conversation then about how the two of you met. Yes. Uh, because uh, Dana, you were working in, in Reno at a different uh, TV station. Yeah, I was working yeah. for the ABC affiliate, and you're kind of looking at some footage from when we first started on the mornings here almost yeah. 10 years ago. So we've been doing the morning shows here at Channel 3 for a decade. But this is back in the late 90s. I was working for the ABC affiliate up in the Reno area, and the hotshot new reporter walks in, and it's Kim <laughs> Capozo at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I do, both my parents went to University of Nevada, and so there are a lot of um, graduates down here. Year, and right. I, I loved when I first moved here and I was going by Capozo. Even though we were already married when we moved down here, a lot of people thought we got married down here because I changed my name. Um, but I love when my parents, you know, old, you know, co eds would walk up and say, I, I went to school with your parents. It so, made me feel good. So I want to put, I, I want to tell you how we actually ended up going on a date. Yeah, yeah. I was not going to go out with another news reporter in the newsroom. I'd done that before. Right. right? The and, next, and why was that I a was problem? Told, well, you know, I mean, because you uh, work with who you're right. Okay, yeah. but, hey. but, they, but, they, but now have, you're you're really in that. Have you, have yeah. you ever you're broken up it. from a woman <laughs> that you were going out with? It's <laughs> happened <laughs> <laughs> a couple times. But you, so you know how it can be. And now you're going into the office and seeing the same person all the time. But but this was different. I'd seen her. She was actually on a date with another man, and I'd known her from the newsroom, and we were friendly, but nothing more than that. And I ended up having a conversation with this woman, and I found her fascinating, and I found her, of course. very very attractive and she was funny and I thought Hmm. <laughs> One more time, and the rest is history. He pretty much sidled up to the date, um, and he right. didn't even realize it was on like a date. Elbow, yes, elbow the date thought through. it was yeah. extremely rude, but yeah. So we, we ended up hitting up. We went out in a group setting, yeah. and then we ended up talking the whole time. And the rest is history. Now we've been mar married 17 years. Yes, wow. thanks for remembering. We got honey. married in 2000, so I wouldn't forget. It is when you changed your name to Wagner, was that a big um, issue for you? I mean, you had your, your you know, your professional, you're in right. the entertainment world with making a name for, you know, for yourself, yeah, and now you have to I get married it. and change it? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. I, um, and people are going to probably laugh, but, and I, and Kim Capozo, great name, yeah. served me very well, and it was my professional name, but when our daughter was about three years old, I thought, you know what, I am kind of just a good old-fashioned traditionalist, too, and mm -hmm. I also thought that Kimberly Wagner sounded like a dynasty name. So I thought, oh, that's such a cool name. In fact, I tried going by Kimberly, and then right. people would email and go, what do you think, you're better than me? <laughs> well, it's, I but just thought it was a pretty name. I'll go by Kim. Truth be well, told, when we yeah. moved here in 2001, in January 2001, as a married couple, her name was legally Wagner yeah. at the time. Right. And when we moved out of Reno and down here to Las Vegas, she wanted to change her name to Kim Wagner on the air. The news director at the time thought it was too weird. Kim Wagner, Dana Wagner. They didn't want us associated. Plus, he thought Capozo was very memorable. It wasn't until we started the morning show together that's when they created Wake Up with the Wagners. That's when they yeah. allowed her to change her name to Kim Wagner, and that was July 2007. That was such a no brainer of a decision. You would think right. now, <laughs> now, right? Yeah. yeah. I still think that, remember when Wake Up with Whoopi, that there yeah. was that radio mm -hmm. program for yeah. like yeah. a hot minute? Yeah. I think that spurred something yeah. oh, for them to come up with Wake Up with the Wagners. That's my that guess. That wasn't no our idea, told. by the way. Yes. Do you, it wasn't our idea, Wake Up With The Wagner. That was the was general manager's idea, idea yeah. at right. the time. She said, we have this great idea for a new morning show called Wake Up With The Wagners. And this was in June of 2007. And at first, we weren't into it. 
Yeah, I thought we I was going to get Nina's do- job. Yeah, Nina, Nina Ratatouche. Yeah. She wanted right. to do. We wanted yeah. to work. I was working the evenings. I was the weather guy in the evenings then, right. and she was working weekends. We thought we yeah. could do the evenings together. And when they said the morning show, we were shaking our heads. We said, "Well, think about it." We came back the next day and said, "We'll do it." Yeah. And when you were thinking about it, it meant waking up exceedingly <laughs> early, right? Yes. Yeah. So what and time? it gets earlier and earlier and earlier yeah. throughout the years. Because when we first started the show, it was at 5 a.m. Now we're on at 4.30, and who knows? I mean, we may be on at 2 a.m. at some point. I'm not sure how far back we go. Don't give but them any ideas. I know. <laughs> but that's how, you know, local, local mm-hmm. news has evolved. So we're almost on 24 hours a day now. So, so, we, get, so we get up at 2.40 in the morning. Yeah. You get up at 2.40. Yes. And what time do you leave your house? We leave the house between three ten, three yeah, three ten, three fifteen at We're the latest. We try and do it by three thirty. You, you got it down to so half an hour. Yeah. You can put get get yourself yeah. ready, shower, yeah. suit, preparation. Get out and, Wow. Yeah, pre planning yeah, the fast. night before. Yeah. What am I going to wear so, so I don't have to do that in the morning? And then we're coming in here at 3 30. Yeah. We have a morning meeting, get a cup of coffee in. I try to read the newspaper. We're listening to the national news on the radios. We're driving in. We see the national news as well, uh, a TV at home. And then right. I watch the Today Show, the East Coast version, at 4 a.m. So news gathering mm-hmm. plenty before oh, yeah. we get on the air at 4 30. We are inundated with news, news gathering. And we even have our 11 p.m. news on DVR, yes. so we watch that before we, watch we come. That so we kind of know what's right, going, what's going on, on before yeah. we sleep. Yeah. yeah. So what happens? You wake up at two forty in the morning and you're not feeling well. <laughs> Sore throat, uh, headache, you know. How about going to the Vegas do? Golden Knights yeah. game? And then <laughs> yeah, about a week and a half ago. Yeah. We saw you there. That was yeah. October 10th, the first home game. And I normally do not leave the house after 6 p.m. ever on a right. weeknight on a school night because I know i got to be on air. So i got to be on night, TV. Yeah, no, you would have, it's I said this is the one game, first major league franchise in the city. So we went. I didn't get to bed till about 10. She didn't get to bed till about 11. Yeah. I'm waking her up on October 11th the next day. She goes, what time is it? I go, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And get your yeah. butt out of I bed. I let him sleep extra. Get up. <laughs> so you go, you stay uh, home at six o'clock, and you're asleep by what, seven. Seven is ideal for me. If I can get into bed by seven, and that's great. Usually, it's between seven and eight for me. Mm-hmm. For Kimberly, it's a little later usually. I end up staying up a little bit later with our 12-year-old, mm-hmm. and um, I also just I feel like I don't need as much sleep as he does to function. It's probably not true, but I've told myself <laughs> that, and so that's She's how younger. we've been we've been <laughs> we'll uh, doing yourself. this, <laughs> yeah, for for years. But yeah. he really has the the right attitude about the whole thing because you have to be think about it. You you which I love. You are a loyal viewer, and you know that things are going crazy in the world, and mm-hmm. we have to. You too. Oh, well, that's morning. nice of you to or, say. Or, but, it's, but, it's, but it's true. You, you mentioned well, uh, Katie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How do, how do you manage that with these hours, raising a child um, and having to be gone in the middle of the night? And um, We know. have a lot of help. We're lucky. Yeah. We're yes. fortunate because we do have a team of people who are helping us. We have mm-hmm. the same sitter who comes into our house at 3 o'clock okay, in the morning. Okay, no, well, she comes to work. She comes she to gets work up at earlier 3 than in you. the morning. She yes. gets up earlier than we do. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and she's a, a pretty much a family member right. now at this point. And we uh-huh. met her when Kate was at Schenker Academy and she was in preschool and she was one of the helpers in the class. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she said, you know, when I was kind of saying, no, this is weird, but oh, and this, there's our daughter when she was born in 2015, yes, Summerlin yeah, Hospital. June 2005. And um, did I say 2015? You did. Sorry, I missed, so, I've, yeah, been up since, I've been up since 2.40. She's 12 now, not <laughs> yes. 2. She is 12 now, and um, and so we just really lucked out because okay. I was spreading the word saying, so, would anyone want to do mm-hmm. this? And we got to take so her, and she's been terrific. So the downside is we miss those morning hours because we're gone, right, by 3 right. in the morning, yeah. and now she's getting herself together in the morning, getting to school. We have somebody that gets her to school. Uh-huh. but So that's the downside, and I hear from a lot of parents out there Missing that hour in the morning is yeah. not a downside at all. You should consider yourself lucky. Yeah. But I would like to be there for every yeah. moment that I possibly can. But the upside is this. Who picks her up in the afternoon from school? Right. We do. Yeah. Who's able to do homework with her in the afternoon? We are. Right. Who has dinner with our daughter every night? We do. Who's yeah. there on the weekends with her? We do. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that there's two parents who actually work together together have jobs, spend more time with their kid than we do. I yeah. mean, right. we're very lucky when you look at the big picture. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, there's no perfect solution. Right. I mean, so you do the best you can. Right. Yes. But, you know, when you work together and and, um, <laughs> and live together. Here it comes. It, yeah, here, here, exactly. Because, look, I mean, there's got to be mornings where you're 
on each other's nerves. Yes. Right? It's got to happen. Happens. You're married. How married can I ever be years. upset with this girl? <laughs> Right? It does so, happen. So you come to work and you got to put that smile on your face. Mm -hmm. now, what, do you, what do you confine your, your arguments to commercial breaks? Yep. Yes. <laughs> it's that actually is, not yes. far from the I truth. I was going to say um, that is essentially what will happen because we don't harbor anything. We'll right. get it out if there is something that they're arguing about. But you know what? We're on the same page as far as all the big stuff. Mm -hmm. And look at what has happened in our community recently. I mean, talk about not sweating the small stuff. I'm not saying that we don't argue. Everyone bickers from time to time, but as far as how to present the news, what we think is important to have in the newscast. We're really on the same we're, page. And we're very, very lucky in this regard too, Ed, is that um, we do have deep love for each other. So that's where our relationship mm -hmm. begins. We do have the same values, which is really nice. You will not meet a more loyal person than my wife, so we don't worry about cheating spouses. Plus, who has time when we're together all the time? And I'm so tired, and I'm just trying to take care of one woman. Why would I think about having an affair on my wife? But it's funny you mentioned it. We do argue sometimes, yeah. and, and our crew has to suffer through it as well, but our arguments last two minutes and 20 seconds, yeah. just during the commercial when, during, break. Yes, when we're when, seeing your Yeah, spot. when we see your face come yeah. up on the commercial break, we know we gotta get it done before <laughs> gets off right. the air. But you know, it's yeah. so nice to work with a true pro. I'm so proud of him, not just because he is my uh -huh. husband and I think he does a great job, but as a professional, I know when we're out there on the desk, and that's another reason why we really have to go to bed and we really rarely cheat on our sleep because yes, we have a prompter and we have scripts, but we had the Boston Marathon um, bombers, um, the manhunt, yep. that we had to be, you know, our head on a swivel and, and that win an Emmy, which yeah. was, oh, yeah. it, it was so. You the, which, what'd you win the Emmy We for? won an Emmy for the best morning newscast mm -hmm. for Wake Up with the Wagners, yeah. and it was in 2015, and it meant so much because you know Javonda Bond, who yes. is a director here at the station, and Karina Howe, and this mm -hmm. tremendous crew that we right. get to work with, and they were all a part of that. It was a breaking news morning. It was when a Metro officer got shot when he was investigating. Yeah. He um, lived. He, yeah, he was okay. He ended up getting shot in the leg, I believe. And he was investigating a prowler call, and someone opened fire on him, and it was an active manhunt. They yep. caught the guy on the air. On the air. So right. you see how we have to pretty much go to bed right. between 7 and 8 when you're just <laughs> ad-libbing yeah. like that frosty. and being sharp. You yes. have to be sharp. Remember the Arab Spring when, when Egypt was falling, crumbling? We had that live on the right. television, yes. and we've had right. bombings overseas. Those things happen in Paris, but they're happening during the morning here. They happen right. in Paris in the afternoon, right. and we have but they're happening during it. our program here. Yeah. So, so how do you prepare yourself for something that happened October 1st in Las Vegas? Hmm. Oh, I don't know if there's a preparation. Um, we were kicked in the gut, yeah, all of we us were. as a community. I'm going to try not to cry even I know. remembering it, but... Um, it was so hard to um, really wrap my head around what was going on, but then also be professional and talk about it yeah. and interview people because I was out in the field um, that morning. We got word what happened. We called the station and said we're on our way in, and we were on. Um, Dana was out on the set. I was out in the field at 4:30 in the morning. And here you're meeting these survivors, and they have such compelling stories, and you can't believe what they've been now, through. We both got choked up on the that air that was the day. hardest part of the preparation yeah. for that was that we are a part of the community. We love it here in Southern Nevada. This is our, our daughter goes to public school here. She was born here. Uh, this is lived our in the town. state for 26 years. She was born in the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. So this is our town. So we took it personally, yeah. just like most people did in our community. Yeah. But the, really the only way that you could prepare yourself to report the news is just to do it. I mean, right. I've been doing this since professionally in television since 1984. Kim, 10 years after that, we've just been doing it a long time. We've seen a lot of things, n nothing quite like that. No. Um, but we've just been doing it so long that over time, you kind of learn your craft a little bit. What was the uh, the biggest goof up you've had? Oh my there? goodness! <laughs> when you Where do I begin? When you fell on that skateboard. Too bad we couldn't oh. have had Karina find Thank that you. video. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> so things happen on live yeah. television. I used to skateboard as I was a kid. Grew up in right. L.A. I was pretty good at it. Uh -huh. Well, they opened a new skateboard park on the east side of the Las Vegas Valley, and I was doing weather at the time. This is probably 12 years ago, right. evening weather, and you know I'm doing all the graphics. And I think I can skateboard with the best of them. So I get on the skateboard and I'm paddling yeah. around. And of course 
course, I haven't done it in 20 years, and I fall flat on my behind on live television. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. And, it was you know, fun. thank goodness for the professionals that I work with. They just acted like nothing happened. <laughs> Not. They, they re racked the video, and they kept playing it over and over and over again. I go, no, thanks. Greatest guys. hits. Yeah, <laughs> the greatest hits. I think the, um, for me, I don't know, not so much a goof, but I was doing a live report up in Reno. And I was, it was, learned our lesson. It was St. Patrick's Day, and mm -hmm. it was an 11 p.m. live report in a bar. <laughs> what could go wrong? So somebody actually didn't throw beer on me. They yeah. spit beer out of their mouth on me while I was on live TV. <laughs> Lovely. So and, that and was you, probably I'm the I'm sure worst. you maintained absolute <laughs> composure on that. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, what are you going to do? I just said, oh, it's getting a little out of control, so I'm going to send it back to you in the station. And mm -hmm. the anchor at the time at the station was livid. He was really mad. So he is the one who kind yeah. of um, got to express that, even though I, I just I just felt mortified. Right. I mean, it yeah. was just terrible. Yeah. So. Before you do your show in the morning, you have a um, you do a Facebook uh, thing or you do a live uh, yeah, Facebook, Facebook Live. Yeah, Facebook Live. We're doing that usually between 6.45 mm -hmm. and 7, right. actually. How, how's that going? It's cool, the right. whole social media thing as far yeah. as integrating that whole thing. What do you try to do? Thing. Like talk about what, what you're going to be presenting on the news? Oh, that's, I see you're saying that's yeah. kind of our, our tease. Which we yeah. kind of try and come up with a talker of the day. Yes. We did Harvey yeah. Weinstein recently yeah. and mm -hmm. what he's going through and right. what he apparently put women through. Um, Vegas Golden Knights, Raiders, you know, things that we, we know people are going to yeah. have an opinion on. It, we really try to find like kind of the topic of the day. I right. think, you know, sometimes we hit it, sometimes we don't. But we try to, we try to talk about what people may Maybe you're talking about in the community because we do want to hear from people yeah, out I, there and I, I think the way things are these days it's so interactive right with Facebook and Twitter you can really talk to your audience yeah. in a way that we never could when I started the business so it's kind of fun for sure and it's interesting to hear what people have to say I, and I think it's important because the viewers that's what it's all about and so we want their opinion we want and you know and sometimes it's unpleasant mm -hmm. like get your roots done okay well <laughs> thank you I will do you find, usually they say it yeah. to me <laughs> why, why, why is it that when most people, not not everybody, but most people, when they get onto social media, it's complaining about something. It's finding the yeah. negative in something. I know. Um, I don't know if it's because it's just an easy way to vent and you're not directly in front of the person, mm -hmm. especially if you have a, a right. bone to pick with it's somebody. It's more anonymous, right? And so, right, yeah. and so they feel a little more freedom to really let it go. I mean, people are complaining all the time, aren't they? But now, in the past, they used to have to go to their phone. When I was in the in 1980s, if they had some something wrong with you, they had to go to the phone book. Yeah. They <laughs> find yeah. the hearing the person's voice and the rest, mm -hmm. or they'd have to write you a letter. That would almost never happen. Now it's easy. They just get on their computer yeah. and fire off an email right. saying you suck. Yeah. Being in the business as long as you have, and, and you see the industry changing, particularly over the last year or two, maybe three. Uh, with fake news, with a lack of, <laughs> I mean, uh, it yeah. seems like the news, the media has lower uh, ra <laughs> ratings than congressmen, yeah. which is pretty hard right. to accomplish, right? I mean, that's got to be upsetting to you because you try to do a good job, you try to be uh, transparent, you try to be f um, honest, and, and then you get this feedback, which is not good. I'm just hoping that most fears, and that's where credibility comes in, local yeah. news anchors who are trusted have never been more important because of what is going on with um, a lot of people get their news on Facebook and you know people share and everything else and it's not accurate. I guess what I'm here to say is we take our jobs very mm -hmm. seriously. We fancy ourselves as journalists. We happen to be on television talking about right. the stories, but we are journalists. We went to journalism school. And so it is upsetting that well, the fake news um, monster. Fox News espousing the vision of the right. And when that happened, that severely divided our country, but it also brought our industry under scrutiny in which we had never seen before mm -hmm. because of these comments. And a lot of it was not journalism based, right? A lot of it was opinion based. Which is okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. mean, Fox News, they, they give it that opinions. way. Right. Well, exactly. Yes, people have to exactly. know what they're but watching. But couch it that way. Right. You'll be watching a news program and they make it sound like it's fact. On the left and the right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember Both when we were growing up, um, there were three networks. It right. was ABC, NBC, CBS. They all pretty much had the same news. Mm -hmm. They all pretty much couched it the same way, but there was huge trust from America that they were getting it. It was fairly down the middle, right? right? Maybe a little bit to the left, right? Maybe a little right. bit liberal uh -huh. bias, but it was pretty much down the middle. 
You don't see that anymore, right? Not I still all. think ABC, CBS, and NBC are still fairly close to the middle, maybe a little closer to the left than right. the middle, but then you have these polarizing opposites on cable right. news. Yeah, it's, uh, and, what, and social media has really played media. into that almost as, as uh, predominantly as uh, cable news has. It's yeah. changed well, the look landscape. Look what happened with the election. And look what they're With finding Russia, out yeah. now about Facebook and the, the, the fake news reports mm -hmm. that were put out there to influence the outcome of the election. Right. I mean, there's so much um, demographic information coming out in this industry, so much, um, uh, so many focus groups. Yes. Um, I mean, it, 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 does it reach a point where you just say, hey, you know, the, the science is telling me one thing, but my intuition feels something else? All the time, Ed. Yeah. In fact, we look at each other and we say, all we can do is be the best Kim, be the best Dana, and then right. the, as it, you know, whatever the ratings are, the ratings are. There's, I think when you go and you try and chase, okay, I, I've known TV stations, and it's never happened at this station, but I know other TV stations where they even name their viewer Lorraine or something like that. She is a single mom. She does. So right. I just think... You know and what? You're trying to speak to Lorraine, right? And so now you're right. trying to tailor all of your, um, you know, it's like the content to right. Yeah. And so yeah. we just do. The, it's the news of the day. We do the yeah. best job we can. We come prepared, and I'm hoping that we win in the ratings. But I can't lose sleep if we don't. It, I, I think it comes down to the same thing, and it has come down to the same thing since I started in the business 35 years ago, and since the business was invented. A long time ago, if you tell compelling stories and they are out there on a nearly daily basis, especially in a community like Las Vegas, and you tell the truth and you tell them in an interesting, easy to understand way, right. if you just do good old fashioned journalism, I think that's what people care about. Yeah. Yeah. Am I wrong? I don't know. Uh, well, no, I think it's important. And, and then you to take the extra step and really involve yourself in the community. You step up for a lot of charitable causes all the time. What are some yeah. of the... Um, um, Make-A-Wish make is wish. one. That's yeah, we have yeah. some that are near and dear to our hearts. Yeah. We do Make-A-Wish Mondays. We've been doing that almost 10 years. Right. Um, and, we're, and it's not just what we do on television on oh, Mondays no. with Make-A-Wish. Right. Um, we're intimately involved in their Walk for Wishes every year. Dinners, oh, emceeing. Yeah. Yes. And we've yeah. become friends with a lot of the right. people within these You're on the board for SafeNest. Yeah, for SafeNest. Uh -huh. And Safe. you're heavily involved with Nathan Adelson yeah, Hospice. Yeah, my dad spent uh, my final days of his life, in essence, at Nathan Adelson Hospice. And they treated him yeah. so well. And they treated me so well. Erwin Malaski is on the board over there. I think yeah. he, I think Erwin maybe even started Nathan Adelson yes, Hospice 50 years yes, ago. Yeah. And I, I didn't know um, Mr. Malaski only by name. And he called me. The the day my dad was admitted and said, if there's anything I can do to help so you or your father, let me know. Yeah. And because they treated me so well, I now try to give it back to them. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing an event for them. Uh, in fact, as this airs, it'll be just a few nights ago. Right. Yeah. So. And, and you know what? And I think it's so important. I do feel like that's where we can use the power of media also to get people interested. And Make-A-Wish has done more for us than we've ever done for yeah. them. And I True. say, you know, people need a dose of inspiration. And when you see these kids and what they've been put through and the smile they have on their face and their attitude, what do I have to complain about? Oh, well. So I think it's great for the community to see that, too. We, we need inspirational television to go along with the tough stuff that we have to cover. Yeah. The, um, the Adelson Hospice was started, uh, you're right, with, by Irwin. He was partners with the Adelsons, and they had a media company called Lorimar Productions. I didn't know that. That's which cool. created um, Dallas and some of his old TV shows. Get out. You, you have yeah. been around a while, my friend. Yeah. You have yes. institutional knowledge. I smell as we a video say. vault. Yes, <laughs> Tom Holly. Get, get Tom Holly in the line. They, no, they also, they also started, sun, they built Sunrise Hospital. Amazing, yeah. the Malaskis. Yeah. And, and Irwin's See? still around. Yeah. He's yeah. in his 90s. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yep. An, an institution, just like you are. <laughs> well, I don't know about me, but <laughs> I mean, but Las Vegas has that. You have people yes. who are pioneers, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, 60, 70 years ago, yeah. 50, 40. I mean, and and the, the children and the generations keep, uh, keep giving back, keep being involved. You know, one of the things I've always said about Las Vegas, and you tell me if you feel this is your opinion as well, when, when you live in another city and they talk about accomplishing something, a minor rail, a building, whatever it is, 20 years later, they still talk about it. In Las Vegas, we talk about things and 
Well, they happen. I know. I mean, look they, at this Vegas built. Golden Knights. The Raiders are coming. Right. You're, it is a can-do city, yeah. and it's an exciting city. I mean, I think we I, live in one of the most exciting cities on planet Earth. I love Las Vegas for a lot of different reasons. One, there are a lot of people, but they have different experiences. The older you get, I mean, you go back to the mob days, right? right? And you still have people that yearn for those days yeah. around this. But it's a very modern city today. It is, I think, the entertainment capital of the world one of the best foodie destinations yeah. ever, one of the most exciting cities to live in, it, but it's still a small town. I mean, you go out to dinner, or I'll see, you know, we went to the hockey game on that opening night. Yeah. I see, hey, there's Ed Bernstein. By the yeah. way, I liked your jersey. You had the Golden Knights jersey on. It has the number one on it, which is cocky. <laughs> I like that. And then on the back, it doesn't say Bernstein. It says, enough said. Yeah. I loved it, man. I was like, God, that's awesome. But yeah. we run into you around town. Yeah. We're running right. into Irwin Molaski around town. And we're Run into the sheriff around town. Right. Yeah. It's two million people in Clark County, but it's a small town right. with all the trappings and more of a big city. And, and look at how everyone responded on October 1st. By the next morning, here I am out at the corner of the boulevard and uh, sunset. People right. are coming up after watching our reports, coming up and saying, I'm not an Uber driver, but can I take somebody? People bringing up water. Someone bought a guy a mm -hmm. plane ticket who I interviewed, this attorney out of right. Southern California who was stranded. Mm -hmm. So that warms my heart. It I makes know. me so proud to be a lost I mean, Vegas. everybody's from somewhere else, right? Yes. I mean, in this community, I think mean, there's a lot of people who are born and raised, and they're very proud of that fact. Right. You run yes. into them. I was born here. But a lot of people, most of us, come from outside of here. But this is our home now, yes. and you get the feeling of community. And on that note, um, exciting census information I heard recently that um, Las Vegas and Southern Nevada continues to grow mainly because people are staying here. So generations are staying here and having um, their families here. So it's not an influx of people today in 2017 moving from outside of state in. It's, it's you know, you have children, your children have right. children. I think it's really exciting. Yeah, I was at a uh, UNLV event uh, the other night and they were saying that UNLV is the number one most diverse campus in the United States. Think about UNLV. that. That's incredible. Yeah. So people are coming from, from all everywhere over. and anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And look at how great the law school is yeah. doing. Law school's it, incredible. Medical and school and starting. Yeah. And how fast did they did they move up the ranks in terms of the law school? school. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And the hotel yeah. school is one yeah. of the best in the yeah. nation. It, it's, yeah. Hey. We can fill a whole other show talking about how, how, but we how great this Vegas, city is. Vegas yeah. strong and Vegas proud. Yes. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Kim and Dana thank Wagner. You. Hey, I'll catch you in the morning. Thank, thank you so you. much. And thanks thank for you. having us yes. on. And, and thanks to Las Vegas for supporting us over all these years. Thank you. She always wondered how you always finish on time. Yeah. yeah. You do it well. <laughs>many types of careless drivers those who text and drive drink and drive and those distracted drivers if you've been hurt you need to call me enough said call ed edbernstein.com